place A new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space Our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of our name Here we will take the wine and the water bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well, Teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the love of Jesus Christ our brother, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now prepare our hearts to celebrate this Eucharist together. Confident of God's love and mercy, we acknowledge our faults. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Together with the angels, let us praise God as we sing. to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth. For you alone are the Holy 
one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father glory to god glory to god glory to god in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of goodwill amen amen let us pray O oh god look upon us creator and ruler of all things and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord, and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. 
For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be you to God. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought in before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives the other from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Our scriptures today are focused on forgiveness. In our first reading from the Hebrew scripture, Sirach warns us that if we are vengeful, we will suffer God's vengeance. Furthermore, Sirach insists that it is our own need of forgiveness from God that should prompt us to grant that same forgiveness to others, and not because others have earned our forgiveness. Jesus takes forgiveness to an even deeper level. Our gospel passage is in two sections. First, Peter asks Jesus how many times must he forgive his brother? Rabbis at that time taught that you must forgive another three times. So Peter, in an effort to show that he is learning something about Jesus' missions, suggests not just twice three, but even once more for seven times, seven that perfect mystical number. Jesus has more to teach him, however, and Jesus says, no, not seven times, but rather, and here the Greek can be translated as either 77 times or 70 times seven for 490 times. The hyperbole is clear. We are not to set a limit on how many times we forgive someone, for we are forgiven repeatedly. We are to forgive as we have been forgiven. The preacher Roger Lovett describes Jesus' lesson this way. Simon, put away your calculator. It isn't about math, 
It isn't about keeping score. Forgiveness is an attitude, a way of life, Peter. It's a matter of the heart. Now in the second part of Jesus' lesson on forgiveness, it comes in the form of a parable, but the hyperbole continues. We don't, in Matthew's gospel, get any numbers, but in, and we do in the other parts of the New Testament. A king is owed 10,000 talents by his servant. This is an incredible amount of money since one talent of silver was worth 15 years wages for a menial laborer. The debt the servant owes is an incalculable amount of money. It is too ridiculously large a sum to make any sense under any circumstance. But the amount is meant to indicate an inconceivable debt. Otherwise, the parable doesn't bring the point home. The servant doesn't ask that the debt be forgiven, but rather that he be released in order to pay off the debt, something he would never be able to do in several lifetimes. The king is so moved, however, that he not only releases the servant, but also forgives him his entire debt. The servant is set free from jail and from all obligation to repay what he owed the king. But then, as we heard, the servant, who has been so graciously forgiven, confronts his fellow servant, who owes him 100 denarii, or roughly three months' wages, not 15 years' wages. The contrast is one that amounts to an exaggeration, of course. The second servant's debt is only one six hundred thousandth of what the first servant owed the king. Jesus draws a connection between the generosity of the king and the generosity of God. The debt owed to both of them can never be repaid. We, who correspond to the debtors, have this compassion as an example after which we should pattern our relationships with one another. The way of God is the way of forgiveness. And what it calls us to is a new way of viewing the world. Remember what Sirach said, that it is our own need of forgiveness from God that should prompt us to grant that same forgiveness to others, whether or not others have earned our forgiveness. We may think that the process of forgiveness and reconciliation begins with the offender repenting of the offense and then asking for forgiveness. But in fact, the opposite is true. The process must begin with the one offended offering forgiveness and this willingness to forgive, transforming one from being a victim to being a survivor. Furthermore, such magnanimity is what may touch the heart of the offender, who may also be so transformed as to no longer be an offender, but maybe even a friend. Jesus' wonderful parable of the prodigal son demonstrates how God's forgiveness always precedes repentance. Remember how the son, quote, came to his senses, as the gospel says? and prepared a little confessional speech. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. We can only imagine how many hundreds and hundreds of times he rehearsed these words as he traveled home. And what happens when the father sees him coming over the hill or around the bend? Does he stand on the porch, tapping his foot with his arms folded, waiting for him to come crawling home, to come groveling for forgiveness? No. He runs to him, and even before the son can finish his little apology, the father embraces him and is busy giving orders to his servants to prepare a homecoming banquet. I have often said that if we had no other words of Jesus but this one parable, we would have the full teaching of Jesus on the boundlessness of God's love for us. Such is the kingdom of heaven, where all sins are forgiven by an incalculably gracious God. But wait, what about those who aren't sorry? Those who don't recognize or take ownership of their sins? Does God forgive them too? Does God's forgiveness extend to all people, even the most egregious sinners and unrepentant sinners? What about Hitler? What about Stalin, dictators who killed millions of people? What about sex offenders, drug dealers, pedophiles? Isn't there a place of punishment? Isn't there a hell for these horrific singer, sinners? Well, I look at it in a very simple way. If we say God is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere, then doesn't that mean that God has to be in hell? But how can it be hell if God is there? Perhaps in eternity, God is present to all people, just as God is present to all people while we are here on earth. 
But just as some people live their lives here on earth with an awareness of God's presence and love, and others live without knowing or caring about God's presence, so perhaps in heaven, the just turn to face God and God's glory is reflected in them. At the same time, the unjust turn away from God as has been their habit all through their lifetime. Facing away from the glory of God, all they see is the darkness of their own shadow and they spend eternity in isolation, staring into nothingness. God's love and mercy, God's forgiveness and healing are always there for us, but we must open our hearts and our lives to receive these gifts. Then, having been forgiven, healed, and set free, we are called to do the same for others and pray with gratitude and courage as Jesus did. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. Together, let us pray now for our needs, the needs of the church, and the needs of the whole world. For the church, that it speaks to the world with a voice of mercy, forgiveness, consolation, and peace. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that in their efforts to build strong economies and safe societies, they remember the poor and vulnerable, those on the margins, and plan for their well-being also. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who encounter insult or discrimination, that the trials they encounter will not make them bitter, but will become instead sources of inspiration to build a more just world. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For parish and faith communities, that walking together, we will welcome the troubled and speak words of consolation and hope in our local communities. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish, for them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have passed into new life this week, Monsignor Jerry Sullivan, George Schaefer, Kitty Carroll, and for all those dearly departed who dwell in the peace of the eternal Lord, for them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs and the intentions written in the parish book of prayers, which we now offer in the silence of our hearts. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers and the many prayers in each of our hearts. We are confident of your care for us. Send the Holy Spirit now to strengthen and guide us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O Lord, look with favor on our supplications, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each of us has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother, and Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Join together now and pray with confidence for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's share with one another now a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter among my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Though not physically present at this Mass, as the baptized, we are intimately united as the body of Christ as we participate in this spiritual Holy Communion.
Let us pray. O Lord, we pray, may the working of this heavenly gift take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And after our final hymn, we'll be back with some brief announcements. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. By still waters into mercy And nothing can keep us apart So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise, O oh God For your grace is enough Your grace is enough Your grace is enough Your grace is enough, your grace 
Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. For me. Well, I just have really one main announcement for you today, and that is next week, we're gonna have a new presider here for the Mass. This is Father Paul Sile, who's joined our campus ministry uh, parish team, and he primarily works at the North Campus at the Newman Center there. You may know him because he had a cooking show for, I don't know, like 12, 15 years, something like that, called Our Daily Bread. And Paul will be here celebrating the Mass occasionally, just like Father Greg does, and so we'll be welcoming him next week. In the meantime, stay well, Stay safe and God bless you. May go up the mountain of the Lord. Who can stand in his holy place? The clean of hand and pure of heart. Who devoted their lives to him?